Well, we're gonna take a listen now to Five from the album Revolution from my special guest here, Noel Morgan. in the good fight. London from Freetown. Hope you had a wonderful time. All those going through, passing all struggle, and fighting to overcome, your will be done. Such a powerful track. So compelling. Is it is it a skill that you do you practice? Not really, my brother. Um, you know, it's what, right from the heart. And, um, you know, when we see our condition as a people and our, our struggle and our revolution and all these things come about, it comes from a moral stand. All these names are called the start, the struggle, and moral basis. So we see that we need to go back to find out what strength they had that they could do that, that we came today. So that's why I, I write that from the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, just look back. You think about Marcus Garvey, mm -hmm. think about a Nat Turner, mm -hmm. Paul Bogle, mm -hmm. Sam Sharp, mm -hmm. Patrice Lumumba. Everything was on a moral stand. 
both deal with morality and they all bring them down. Martin Luther King, yeah. you know, and they still bring him down. So we, as a people, know of this. We complain in various languages. Mm -hmm. The same tribulation, the same oppression. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we see that we have to go back into these ancestors to get the inspiration to come forward, that right. we can go forward. Absolutely. Because we must go forward. Very inspiring. And that track was dedicated to our very own chief, Bakram Abai. You know, he went to Sierra Leone um, sometime and he's been going there, you know, organizing, you know, um, a good thing for the people there. And um, through recognition as well and appreciation, um, they've elected him a chief. So next month here, we're celebrating um, the crowning of that here in, in, in London. Um, so that, that's a really beautiful transition. Like I was saying, yourself, you're involved in Africa. You've been going to Ghana for a very, very long time. 25 years. That's right. And you've involved a lot in, 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 in developing things and in, in, in being in, in, in an association and, and project with a lot of people. And we're going to talk about that um, in a minute. But before we do that, let's, let's look at the, the journey. Because we, you, earlier on you mentioned reparation. And here, of course, is something that we preach all the time. You know that we need to repair we repair ourselves yeah. in order to come together one has to work on themselves yeah. first so in, in america in the united states um there's a the revolution has taken place there whereby the people are much more conscious but how conscious are the americans um compared to the uk um blacks about the reparation and about reclaiming oneself and going back to africa well, you know, um, in comparison, to be honest, um, maybe that really kept me in America because when I went there, I didn't like it. And um, maybe uh, the cultural experiences really kept me there because I, I see much more there then mm -hmm. than when I was in England. Right. I could see strong culture. Reparation, I think it's, um, it's all over. It's so sad that it's minimal mm -hmm. in the sense that all our people are galvanizing mm -hmm. that we can demand it. Because it's demand, mm -hmm. and if you demand in the right context, you're gonna get what it is, mm -hmm. and we're supposed to get. Mm -hmm. um, the people in the US today, I think the drive is still there. I don't think I think what it is is that we're going one step forward and sometimes two step backwards mm -hmm. for whatever reason, and sometimes we are frustrate each other mm -hmm. and in groupings. Some want to claim in this arena. For instance, my name is Noel Morgan. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the name I was, was given. Mm -hmm. I keep it because it have a reason. But I, I would love to carry African name. Mm -hmm. But I maintain Morgan that if we should come together and say, look, this is a class action suit against those who are supposed to pay separation, mm -hmm. Morgan can. Yes. Be yes. part of it because right. I was born in the West. Right. And I was enslaved in the West. Right. My grandfather. Right. So I'm maintaining it more. Okay, so you're saying in order to get reparation, that it's good to keep the colonial name because that is a proof that one has been psychologically, mentally, and also culturally been removed from their part. I've, I've never really had, I mean, thought about that before. Yeah, I, I think about that, you know, because I, they call me coffee. Okay. Coffee is what I've been called. Like I'm in Africa, they say coffee. Coffee yeah. more. Yeah, coffee, yeah. You know, but um, I maintain Morgan because, uh, as I said, mm -hmm. when we bring the class action suit, because yeah. we need everybody to be involved. Yeah. You know, we have some of our people who say, it's a long time, so you don't want to be bothered. Mm -hmm. Things like that. And that's something we, we frustrate each other. Yeah. You know, because sometimes we're satisfied with our present condition. Mm -hmm. Some people become, they, 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 um, they settle. For instance, you climb the ladder. And, um, as you reach certain height of the ladder, you're stepped on. Mm -hmm. Why? Why not go further to the last rung? So we must use that as the people realize that they only appease you to a certain level. Right. And we want to get to the top. You see, we want to get to the top. So yeah. therefore, when they're gonna suppress you at one level and suppress me at one le another level, then Something right is only, only living in appeasement. Right. We living in an uncomfortable cell of hell. Mm -hmm. What do you think then? Because the reason I try to compare America now, it seems to me that before Obama, the saga, 
the man who everybody was waiting for now has arrived it seems to see if now like blacks in america has gone backward like you're saying because it's like okay what are we going to do now where else can we go i mean um what else it's like we all kind of marginalized now now we are there now we've acclaimed these um black man being the president so what else do you feel that in america oh yes the appeasement again come back to appeasement because um to me um the power yeah you can't show the power mm. and if you can't show the power then something is wrong i mean for instance um all these um killing of young old black people if you should just say that's wrong they would say he's a racist you know they, they'll say that they'll tell you that you know he, he should have said anything like even Trevor they try to say something and they act like he shouldn't have opened him out in regards to Trevor and therefore I think they're trying to prove something you could be a black person or whatever and, but no, ain't nothing changed so we'll be, we see we are going back mm -hmm. but it depends on us we came mingling somebody's politics that doesn't have any reward mm -hmm. we have to build our own politics for freedom and liberation because that's all we're striving for mm -hmm. freedom and liberation and what do you think within those freedom and liberation because what i've seen as a young man growing up and this day i mean to my experience as well i think there are fundamentals that are uh, putting the screw in the hole and turning it you know to close to lock mm -hmm. you know rather than unscrewing the lock into open position mm -hmm. The reason I say that is that we've all had knowledge about the things that have kept us as Africans in particular, but also the world at large, um, the things that have kept us in enslavement mentally, socially, um, you know, um, emotionally and spiritually as well, which is for me is religion. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, if it will come a time that we realize that, 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 that God which was being given to us, you know, as an entity, being served to us in a book called the Bible. Right, right. And from, because I wonder at these, you know, things, because, you know, I wasn't there when the Bible was created at all, but I read it as a young man, and I'm still sometimes go back and do some research and research and ask myself a question, why this is happening, is that where you talk about world domination and you know powers world order and all these atrocities that's going on you know it's like africans or black people in general universally are oblivious to the structure of that making that system there and yet still they are the most prayerful people in the planet so i am saying well this god has been served to us in the play you know the father you know is actually you know kind of gradually since that time help us and we're helping ourselves to one disrespect our mothers because I, I mean the christianity doesn't really respect women at all we should we should come to a point we realize that and women should speak out of that because in when you open the book it talks about genesis it definitely demonized women up to this point, I mean, recently this morning, was watching a clip where a man, I think this happens in America, no other place, he, he's got about 10000 or so dollars in his suitcase, and he's saying he's going to buy a woman, um, a wife. And he, he was going around approaching couples, mm. right? And <laughs> I'm not sure this is kind of European thing or is, an, is, a, is a human thing. Probably, African probably would fall short of that as well, but we're not... We're not excluding money and these kind of behaviors. Yeah. He actually got a couple, uh, a, a man and a woman, you know, presented this man. I think it was $100, yeah. $100,000 or something like that. And he says, you know, can you send a wife to me just for a day? I'm going to pay you $100,000. Yeah. And the man sitting there contemplating it with a wife. Yeah. And eventually they decided, yes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, when we look at all of these, all right and we see that as africans there is a world order going around where they're persecuting other people in the world and africans are oblivious to that we're not included so if we are not part of that and god is meant to be a good god you know because he's, he's meant to be, you know be the, the creator of the universe mm -hmm. you know ends where everything good should happen under his own dominion control then what is happening that to us that 
even at this perilous time for us, a time where we've been suppressed economically, politically, and otherwise, why are we still yet in, 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 in command of that book, that word? Is this something as an elder you've actually contemplated on yourself? Oh yes, of course. Um, you know, I'm a student of religion, but I know that's a burden on African people's head and shoulders. Um, we are so removed from our own religion as a people. You know, we have Putum, we have Yoruba, we have all kinds of religion in Africa that we used to. You know, and they'll tell people that we, you know, pray to a tree. Why do I sit on a tree and pray to whatever God we pray to? Our true and living God. Well, there's an English lady, I mean, just recently last year married to a tree. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's her husband. You know, yeah. but, um, you know, so we're so far removed. And, um, you know, the, the Bible is the number one seller of all books on earth, the Bible. And many people don't read the Bible. I don't read it. I read passages. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. I should have really sit down to read the Bible because the little bits I read in the Bible, I see a lot of controversy. Mm -hmm. You know, you see where God um, really endorsed slavery in many parts of the book. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we should bow down and we should be praising our slave master. God endorsed that according to the Bible. Yeah. And, um... If you read um, Isaiah, I think it's 45, 7, it says, um, I create good and I create evil. You know, so if God created all these things, it's all this evil. We, there's something you got to understand because if you created something that you didn't want, mm. then something is wrong. You know, there's so many things like you said, um, love thy neighbors, I said, he's the God of all children. Mm. Love thy neighbors, I said, but yet some neighbor is doing all this brutality and you can stop it, then it, it, it should stop it immediately. Mm. You know, so these are the things that I think we need to read the Bible to understand. I think the Bible is a book that meant to control us. Right. It meant to control us. And yeah. if you go through the many different Bibles before this King James, as a matter of fact, it's the first Bible that the, the European took to America was the Geneva Bible. Yeah. And um, then came the, Saint, the King James Version. Yeah. King James was summoned in 16, I think 1604, he was summoned to do the King James Version and mm. he brought back seven years later, 1611. Now we're African people. Mm. We've been in slavery, we're brought to the diaspora to be slaved. Mm. Christopher Columbus came there. He died 105 years before that book, mm -hmm. King James Version, mm. was surfaced. Mm -hmm. So something is wrong for us to know religion long before anybody else, but this former religion is controlling us. You know, because it's funny when you say something is wrong, I always question, like I said, you know, the Bible, criticize women you know it, it was the first book really that persecuted women and and, and and legally you know expressed to us as men that we are somehow um, above women you know that says that women are not relevant even in 2016 you you people are going and thinking that women can be bought you know if you have money you can even women believe that that if you pay me the right price you know I can do whatever you want you know so to me it's like degradation of the human race it doesn't matter who you are because that sort of thinking there whereby all human race apart from adam came through a woman yeah you know so how come yet still we were taught you know subconsciously that women are not good enough that women are not in an equal plane with men where women are dangerous women are are evil you know so what about men you know, if men, if women are devils, then men are God. So then, like you're saying in Isaiah, if God created as basically the Bible says that a woman come from a man reaps, that is basically unscientific, even up till now. Yeah. Then what are we dealing with here? Are we going in head on, eyes open, and mouth shut? That's it. That's it. That's what I think so because um, you know, some people try to challenge these things, and you hear that um. You wouldn't understand it's God work and it's God plan. No, if God want me to come and serve Him, then I have to understand your plan. When they try to come, your black certain things that you're blaspheming. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, things like that. But I'm challenging things that's contrary in this art of living. You know what I mean? You're gonna tell me um, you want me to go somewhere good, but you build a bad road for me. It makes no sense. Build a big ro the good road and let me go to it because mm. you want me to be good. Yeah. When you're going to give me a choice and when I use the choice that you gave me, mm. you're going to turn on to me and then you go throw me eternal fire for the rest. What kind of father going to burn his child forever? <laughs> well, two weeks ago, I had a guest here.
from Cameroon, Multivaldo. He's performing actually on the 8th of April at the Ritzy, so something you need to pay, um, put in your diary. And he had an album called Gods and Devils, yeah. and he made us understand that um, this is one of the same, it's two of the same thing, you know, because it's our thoughts, whether good or bad, that builds up a character within our minds, and ends we, you know, we go along with a character, because God, you know, I mean, God has been sold to us as a him. So even sometimes, unconsciously or consciously, we, even women do that all the time. With I, me and my body cringe when they talk about God as him. And I, you know, because when they do that, for me, I felt that, well, it's like you're disowning me as, as a son. You know, you're disowning me as a man because if God is a man and you as a woman, then see that you, are, you, know, you, you gave birth to this God, then you are disowning me. You know, it's like, you know, it's a funny thing, really. But this is how I feel. You know, it's like I always make mention as well in the Bible. You have uh, a parable of the five talent. One that was given five, and the other one three, um, three servants. You know, and one. And all the time, you when you go in churches, even ministers do this. And I, I mean, I, I feel ashamed of them, really, especially African ones. But when you read properly, you read that. But the, the story of the talent in Matthew, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you can see clearly that the man with the one talent, mm -hmm. you know, he made us, the reader, understand fully what the master, you know, is all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he said this man, he actually reap where he does in sow, you know, and this man is a dangerous man. And I'm afraid of him. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, maybe if I'm trying to do business and I lost the money, which is like business can be seen as a gamble right. because it's about profit and loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so if I lose, then I'm going to be in trouble because maybe he might take my family. Maybe he might take my wife. Yeah. Maybe he might take my child into bondage. Yeah, yeah. He made us understood who the master That's really brilliant. is. Yes, and failing all that, he kept the money. He dug a hole. And this is like some kind of symbolism that gone past us, like I said, we go straight in, eyes open and mouth shut. Because if he dug a hole, there is no culture in the planet that used to keep things under the earth, apart from Africans. Right. So to me, it tells me that this, this brother here, it could be an African man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because how come he dug a hole? Definitely. You know, nobody actually used to, you know, Europe was so cold, you can't dug a hole to keep. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's face that. So, and he kept his money and he never lost it he never lose it yeah. but yet still the two went and gambled you know and they made a profit yeah. and uh, the master says you good and faithful servant even sometimes our people caught this you good and faithful yeah, servant yeah. you've been good to serve and now you know da, 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 da. Yeah. and then the one with one the master cuss him and all that and i thought this brother is an african brother yeah, yeah. because there is no other race that have exposed, you know, their tribulation, their their suppression, their mom at the time. It's always even speaking like today. There were f um, families in 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 Kuwait, mm -hmm. you know, Sierra Leoneans in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. That somebody involved with the government is telling some Sierra Leoneans, vulnerable Sierra Leoneans, to go to Kuwait yeah. and this Arab country they can make money, yeah. and they're now in enslavement. De that's it, that's right. It. And the government of Sierra Leone is doing nothing about it because the Arab there are boasting that we've got your government in our pocket. Okay, so there's yeah. nothing they can do. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So to me, the struggle still continues because you couldn't do it to another. other. You couldn't do it to another. The Arab could not do that to the Englishman, no, would they? No. Would they do it to the Americans? No. No. So it clearly shows you, and yet still, our ministers in church or in churches you know, do talk about that man who made us understand, like people like myself, who really the master is. That is not a bad man. He does exactly what, as a righteous man, you meant to expose the wrongdoing. Wrong Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Well, these people, these 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 preachers um, are there for just themselves. The same thing. The pocket. It's all about their pocket. These ministers, you see the car they think they want to own. Some even want your planes. And it's all about money. Money is the main factor. Of these preachers preaching this, I'd say nonsense. <laughs> in my eyes, I'd say nonsense because it makes no sense. So do you, so do you think then? I mean, we have hindrance as a, as a collective now because our indi you know individually, some of us have have overcome that. Mm -hmm. You know, it clearly shows even today by the callers we had this morning on Sister Jason so that yeah. some have overcome that, oh, yes. but you still have majority. So do you think that 
you know, this Christianity or Islam is an hindrance and a stumbling block to our growth. All religions are, as African people, all religions are holding us back. It serves no purpose. They have no purpose for us to go forth to meet the to hold us back. Mm. You know, um, if we should read all this book in its entirety and then analyze them, then we can see that it made to hold us back. Those other people are using the book. And also to me, I think the Bible is a very cunning book because what it does, it enlightens the idea of God and what God wants. Yeah. And it keeps the devil and his work really, really out of sight. Yeah. So to me, it's like a cunning behavior because even though we see the troubles, of this world today yeah. as human beings yeah. and yet still we call upon this God even though we know with full conviction that it's not going to come the time we needed it or him to come no so to me I think it's a big massive con because whilst we go in and praying to God the devil is at work doing his own thing and we can't challenge well you know um, the devil who's the devil then too but you know you look at a passage like say, um, when they ask him for collection and they put it away must give plenty abundantly Mm. Cause God loves a cheerful giver. Right. You know, so they ask you to give everything to God. It's only poor people, isn't it? Only poor people. I, I, used to, I used to work for a charity company, and they always send us. You know, I, I call it that job was not soulful. It's one of the jobs I've actually done that is not soulful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, charity. Some charities. I'm not saying all of them. You know, some have good intentions. You can say most. You know, but if you're doing good, you don't have to say. It. That's why I think. You know what I mean? But anyway, you were saying it good. Go on saying it. But I used to work for this charity company, and they used to send us in places, yeah. right, where there are poor people. Poor people. Yeah. You know, because when you go there, you, and 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 the thing is. They, they send you there as a shepherd, yeah. right, to go wean souls. So, for example, you know, you coming across, you know, they will train you that, you know, sometimes they don't want to help, you know, but just convince them. Just, yeah. you know, and you go into people's houses, they're complaining that some of them haven't got light, they haven't got food to eat. And you're there trying to persuade them to sign up to this thing. Mm. And I used to find that, you know, if you've got a heart, <laughs> you know, you find that really, really depressing. Yeah, course, you know, and they don't care. It's how many you come with, per, you know, per day yeah. that gives you that sort of, um, you know, prestige yeah, and yeah, honor. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. You know, to me it's like... You rub, you rub enough, why you rub, can't we go to these places where people can afford it? But no, you can't because they have a gate and you can enter. Also, they have what they wanted, you know, but these poor African people said once they give and they pray to God, God is going to give them in abundance and they'll be praying forever and not get We back. are, because it's like the less we pay attention to the wickedness or the others of wickedness, the more we come to realize as individuals who we really are, the more we see ourselves in relation to the planet and, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, a nature. Definitely. But it's like, I think we're giving a lot of attention to things that are not really, really benefiting us. Not at all. I mean, they make God look like he's sadistic. You know, when, when he, he can create a miracle in five seconds and he wait 400 years before he created this miracle, then he must be there enjoying what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, you, you're going to have to stab the first human being and uh, the first boy, child of a family because you don't want him to grow. So, you imagine that he come, a, someone coming with a knife mm -hmm. in front of a mother mm -hmm. with a young child in her arm and God could flick the knife out of but he waited 400 years to say, well, I'm going to drown you in the Red Sea. Something's wrong. Yes. So